Hello from Netherdale, where this week we bring you the Gala Sevens, which is part of the Marooned at Gala event. After some late withdrawals, we ended up with two pools of four teams, and Stuart Cameron has all the details from the early stages of the competition. The Gala Sevens for 2021 would end up with two pools of four teams, and it soon became apparent who the four would be who would reach the semi-finals. Gala got past second Scots Barbars, GAC Sevens and Watsonians to take their place in the first semi-final, while Melrose skipped past second Scots Asai, Selkirk and Kelso. Turning our attention to the two semi-finals here at Netherdale, let's find out how they shaped up. Ashe out on the far side to Tawa. Tawa has Bakali outside him. Along the line, there goes number 13. That's Tuve. Tuve going in for the try, the first score of the competition. It's Gala nil, Asai 5, Graham. As you can see there, Stuart, as soon as the Asai team got the turnover deep into their own, deep into their own 22 there, you can see how dangerous they were, how alert that Gala needed to be in terms of defence. There was some great defensive work by Murray Wilson to get back and make that last ditch tackle. Obviously just with, with the free flowing Fijians coming through, eh, a good score in the end. Fijians go 5-0 up. And it's Gala right in front of the post. Fergus Johnson on the ball. He has Ewan Dodds outside him. Gives it to Dodds. And Dodds, as you can hear from the crowd, goes over. That was well worked. And uh, Gala draw level at five apiece. But uh, crucially, the score under the post grim. One thing that I haven't been great at uh, today is obviously their discipline. I think that's maybe their third or fourth yellow card of the game. So obviously they're, they're down to six men for the two minutes. And Big Dodgy, who's, who's played well all tournament, He's been a glue that's kept Gala together for the first few games, goes in under the sticks. He's going to go wide out to Murray Wilson on the ball. He's trying to hand off, but again, very good tackling, but very strong work from Murray Wilson. And he goes over for the try out on the right-hand side. And that will certainly give uh, the whole crowd a boost here as well as uh, Gala. They had to score there with uh, the opposition down to six men. And my goodness, they played it wide and uh, another five points. Gala were alert. They were, they were pretty quick in the transition and getting the ball away from the contact zone and then obviously that guy Murray Wilson again strong strong finish there he had a couple of defenders hanging from his back but he got over there for the try great score Gala Gala now one try up Ewan Dodds trying to force space out wide and there goes Johnson who's going to go under the post and that is vintage Ewan Dodds creating the space creating the overlap and uh, in goes Fergus Johnson for Gala's third try He's got Peffers outside him. There's an overlap there with Fairburn. Fairburn gets it. He's going to go in at the corner to touch down for Gala's fifth try. And that's it. Absolutely home and dry now. In the second semi-final, two Scots Barbars took the lead early on with their first attack of the match. Louis Cupacilia touching down under the posts. But the match changed dramatically when a red card was shown for this tackle on David Colvin. And the Barbars were down to six. Good referee in consulting the assistant referee, considering all options before sending off the player, and things would get worse for the army side after that. Melrose drew level when Donald Crawford burst clear and sprinted to the line for a very good try. Then a yellow card dished out for another offence saw two Scots down to five, and with gaps appearing all over the park, Gavin Wood took full advantage to run in for another try. Ross Lyle thought he'd got on the scoreboard with this exciting piece of play, but the flag went up for a foot in touch, and that decision was spot on. But Melrose did score another try late on to win the tie 19 points to 7 and set up an all border final. Well, after over five hours of exciting rugby, we're down to the final of the 2021 Gala Sevens between Gala and Melrose. A faithful down there at the Ferrydean end where the music has been blasting all day. We've had a fabulous day. We've seen it all. We've seen ability rugby, age group rugby, women's rugby, the little kids, and now it all comes to a climax. Gala kickoff, bids well claimed by Melrose number three, Gavin Wood. Bez been guddled, Gala get possession. This man, number six for Gala, Scott Peffers, has absolutely looked the part today. He's kicked well, he's commanded things, he's distributed the ball very well. Ewan Dodds gets his knees on the ground, he's a wily old fox, he knows the rules. Tackle, Peffers has a crack, stands up, Andrew Mitchell's in support, he's going to have to go in and help. This Melrose defence is not going to give anything away cheaply. 
Peffer struggled to get the ball back there. Gala had to commit men. Ewan Dodds in the middle of the field gets the ball away. We've got an overlap here. Scott for Gala carries the ball. We get to deck. Dodds again commanding things. He's got all the tricks. It's a cross field kick. Anything Finn Russell can do, Dodgy can do. Oh, and we've picked up a penalty here for Melrose being in front of the knock-on. So Gala have a penalty inside the 22. Dodds gets his hands on it again. This time it's a left-handed spin pass. Out and it's Gala number 14 who gets the first goal. Fergus Johnson dots down and you can hear the stand. They're happy with that one, Purdy. Yeah, the experienced campaigners, Dodds and Peffers, were the main men in the build-up to that one, Bruce. And yeah, Gala have dominated the early proceedings of this final. Melrose have got their catchers underneath it, it's an absolute peach. It gives a chance and Ewan Dodds gets one hand to it, he flicks it back, Andrew Mitchell has to go to deck but he claims it, he works really hard to stay big and give his support players a chance to get there. It's spun wide, Gala get the ball to the far side again. Wilson has a crack on the outside, he's held up by Crawford but not taken to ground, the leg drive is exceptional, gives his, def his teammates a chance to get there. Melrose look like they're up very quickly, and some of the members in the stand are just helping out the referee there. Dodgy with a one-handed offload, is he a Fijian in disguise, he gives the ball away. Great footwork and he's in again, Fergus Johnson in under the bar for Gala, and the crowd go wild, the stand are on their feet. Bruce Colwine's not happy, he's having a chat to the referee, but there's no doubt in that is a very good score, Purdy. Yeah, that came from the kickoff, Bruce, that combination again, that was Peffers with a lovely high hanging kick, big Ewan Dodds under it, he palmed it back, he was involved again in the build up to that, and as it stands at the moment, it is the Peffers and Dodds show, these experienced campaigners. And then chuck it to Johnson and let him dance his way to the try line. Indeed, that he's is, got the gas. That is a decent start for Gala, and Melrose have got it all to do. Struan Hutchison. Dances, decides to go to the far side. David Colvine breaks, it takes two to take him down, but Melrose support is there. Gala defence are hungry, ref thinks he's either up too quick, so he's got his arm out for an advantage. He's given the penalty, no, it's for not releasing the tackle. Apologies, David Colvine taps, they're keeping the tempo up now. The skill level of this Melrose team has been absolutely outstanding all day. Get the ball away to Gavin Wood. Referee says that went backwards. We've got the ball wide now to Sam Derrick. He has a crack but tackled into touch and you can hear every single positive move by Gala is being rewarded by big cheers by the crowd in the stand. They are hungry for a home win. They're bringing the ball from side to side. This is what they want to do. They back themselves. Oh, and we've got a knock on there. Ronnie Dummer seems to... Oh, it's not Ronnie Dummer. Apologies. Oh, it's Ronnie Dummer. Stunt double. Possibly could have been yellow for me there, Bruce. Oh, yeah, he's going in his pocket. Oh, it's coming it looks out. Like we've got a yellow card for a deliberate knock on. So Gala go down to six players, which is a tough one to take at this point in the game where they were on top. It's that man, Johnson, the try scorer, who has to take two minutes on the naughty step. Melrose hungry, but Gala's defence is strong and tackled into touch. This Gala team are not going to give anything away cheaply. They're now down a player, so they're just going to take their time. Ewan Dodds thought about going quickly and then thought better of it, knowing that they're down. Melrose look like they're overloaded in that forward pack. It's going to have to be a two-man line-out, so a one-man lift. Andrew Mitchell has got his head taped, Ian Jardin, 90s style. It's going to be a one-man lift, I think. Dodds is just trying to check out what's going on. It goes over the top. Great tackle by that man again, Gavin Wood, and Gala guddle the ball over their own try line. Referee is stopping the watch, he wants to have a chat with his in goal judge. Oh, if we could only hear what they're saying. Melrose seem reasonably confident, but not confident enough to come all the way back because it's a long way. Oh, score given. That's going to make him very popular behind the sticks here, Kelly. Yeah, but to be fair, that's uh, the purpose of Simmons. That's why you have in goal judges, because everything happened so quickly. He was in the prime position to see who got their hand on it to ground it first. Purdy, that tries hard. I don't think I'm going to make the highlights package, but it comes from just Melrose being determined in defence. That's right. It was decent defence from Melrose, Bruce. And yeah, it was all a bit of a guddle, and it was it was 
a case of who was going to flop on it first and there was obviously a Melrose hand in there. Soon Hutchison adds the extras and that takes us to half time. So we've got Gala 12, Melrose 7 with 7 minutes of this final to go. Oh, and a big error by Johnson coming off the field to throw to the line out and he's given it away to Melrose. David Colvine carries to the line. It's a great tackle by the young lad Rutherford. David Colvine, smart as you like, releases the ball, gets back up and plays it. Gavin Wood gives it away. The ball hoid back into the middle of the field. Crawford finds himself in the middle, goes for a chip kick. It comes off the side of the boot. It has bounced beautifully for him. But a great tackle by Gala number seven, Scott. Melrose still have it. Strewn Hudson hits a great line off Bruce Colvine and carries the ball in the 22. Gala do their best to slow it down. It comes to Crawford, but he decides it needs to go to the far side. There's a fair bit of space there. David Colvine checks back in. Gala swamp him. Referee's got his arm out. Looks like it's going to be for a high tackle, but we play advantage. Melrose get the ball in the middle of the field. Bruce Colvine tries to come off his feet, but Ewan Dodds is there to meet him. More steps. Melrose carry the ball to five metres from the Gala line. It's a loose offload. The referee's decided no advantage, so he's now blown his whistle and given the penalty. He has to take his time to get to the spot, which gives Gala a chance to regroup. Hutchison carries, it goes to Gavin Wood, the low hitch kick, and he goes in under for the try. Referee is happy. Now that is very kickable, Purdy, which could give Melrose the edge. Yeah, that was fairly relentless pressure by Melrose there, Bruce, but there was some, there was, there was some outstanding defence from Gala in there as well. And, it was a good old passage of play. Great service. Look at the skills. The ball is spinning through the air. David Colvine makes the bust and the tackle is missed. And he is in under the bar. That could be a crucial score because with the extras, Gala will need a couple. There's not been many mistakes in defence, Purdy, but young lad just fell off the tackle there and gave DC the chance to blast away. That's right, Bruce. David Colvin's a direct player and he's backed himself all day, to be honest. And yet, the young boy gave him the outside. He took the outside and he said, thank you very much. Melrose are now in the driving seat. He tickles that one over to give them the extras. So we're now on Gala 12. Melrose 21 and those kicks could be the difference he gets a little bit of a hurry up from Gala as he ambles his way back to the halfway line referee looks like he's uh, needing some oxygen there as well Hutchison with the restart Gala get themselves set they're just a little bit concerned about the, the cheeky one there it's another absolute cracker and Gavin Wood's got the jump on Dodsey there that Dodds smothers Bruce Colvine who gets on the loose ball but Bruce Colvine is not giving this away easily Gala defence looks strong it's tidy they've tried to shut off Colvine so he has to go back the way he's just come they're up that short side, it's really narrow, so they're going to have to stay strong. It's McConnell, who's got no number on his shirt. Gala got a chance to compete for it there, and they win the penalty. you got to pick your times, Kelly, for those competitions, haven't you? Yeah, you really do. You kind of need to assess the back to the attack and see when they're going to go in the The crowd on their feet, they're willing Gala forward. Rutherford takes a difficult ball off his toes. We're having to stand now because the crowd are on their feet. The referee says ball went backwards. And no, he's given it as a knock-on by Melrose. So Gala will have a scrum inside the Melrose half. It looks like we've got an injury, but I'm thinking David Colvine's being a smart old operator there. It's going to be a Gala scrum. We're about five metres from the touchline and just outside the 22. Gala makes some changes. Here comes the, the wrecking ball. Stevie Cairns, number five, on his back. He's on for scrum time. It's like the special teams in gridiron. Scrum down, Gala ball. It's Johnston to put the ball in. He's been a danger when Gala have had the ball. Gives it to Peffers. He spins it away to the young lad Rutherford. It's now wide. Here's a chance for Scott. He dances, but Melrose defence is strong. They've had a crack at it. Referee's got his arm out, looks like he's playing an advantage, but Gala get the ball into Cairns' hands. They're in the middle of the field. It's now coming to that man, Johnson. He's got some gas, he's got a step. Bruce Colwine does enough to get him on the deck, and then he's back for more. The work rate of these boys has been absolutely superb all day. Stevie Cairns stays strong, he gets the ball away. What a handed off road, it's an absolute cracker. Gala keep going, Stevie Cairns gets again. It looks like Gala going to get to the line. That's a score for Gala, number four, Tim McGavinner. And the crowd are on their feet, McGala know how important these conversions are. Peffers has got the ball. Dodgy's telling them not to bother because they still need a score. 
You and Dodds are saying just play the game. Peffers is taking his time. He's waiting for Melrose to get out the way. Dodds is desperate for this game just to get going. But Peffers wants the extras. It's Gala 17, Melrose 21. Peffers no good with the kick, so we still need to score. Not many of the crowd have bothered to sit back down. They are on their feet. What a way for this tournament to climax. David Colvine takes himself off. So Melrose are going to have to do it without their captain. Fantastic. Gala oh, from the kickoff. Kill Arthur, what a pass away. Stuart Hutchison, Melrose have pounced on the loose ball, then it looks like Lewis Marlin might have just done enough for Melrose there, and it is all over, Gala, no good towards the end, they went for it, but Melrose defence stayed true, and the final score of Marooned at Gala final for the men. Gala 17, Melrose 21, and a very hard fought final. No quarter given, no quarter asked for. An absolutely fantastic advert party for Borders Rugby. Shroon, that was a hard fought win, but uh, well deserved. Yeah, no, thanks very much. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Definitely a hard fought win uh, against Gala. Uh, big crowd up for it. Uh, obviously, a home crowd went down a couple scores in the first half, but yeah, the boys dug deep and, and managed to come good at the end. So, uh, got a couple scores up, and then um, they actually came back at the end there. So, it, was, it was, went right down to the end. A um, couple close calls in that, but that's what final should be about. So, no, it, was, uh, it was good to come on the right side of the result. Chuffed with it. Great that you were able to sort of put a team together because I know a lot of others pulled out uh, because of 15s commitments and stuff, but uh, you certainly turned up and uh, yeah. your intention was to win yeah definitely um, again as you mentioned there a lot of teams focusing on, on 15s which will which will start in a couple of weeks from today so yeah fair fair play on on that one uh, we were a little bit disappointed with our performance at Peebles um, yeah, what was that two two weeks before and um, two weeks earlier and then obviously kind of came good at Hoyk and, and then we wanted to put in a, a strong seven or a strong 12 so it was a full squad effort um, into this tournament and yeah, you know, Bruce Colvin, experienced guy, just, just talked about saying um, taking each tie as it comes and, and that's what we did. So we had the, the three pool games into the semi and then, as I say, it was, it was a tight final. Could have gone either way, but uh, we're just delighted to, to have won it. Tough games against the uh, the two Scots, of course. You had both their teams and, uh, my goodness, they, they put in a shift. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, they obviously like to chuck the ball about. They're, qu they're quite physical if you go up the middle against them. So uh, we just talked about our connections, our passes, getting a little bit deeper and, and trying to play around them. Uh, a bit of change of direction, uh, you know, like things like cuts and you obviously got uh, Donald and, and Gav Wood, great feet work, so, so they were able to step. And then when we're going up the middle, kind of everyone's supporting them. Um, so now nah, two, two tough ties against them, as you said. We got one, one of the teams in the groups, um, and then we met the other one in the semi final. So um, yeah, just push to the end in both of them. But. Now, you've been at the Gala Sevens many times in the past, of course. It's very different today. Marooned at Gala. It was still raining. We always get the rain at Gala, it seems. But it was well organised. The atmosphere was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just credit to, to Gala Rugby Club. Obviously, really well-run event. Um, I think, speaking to a few of the people around here and, and also as a team, we're just glad to kind of get that sense of normality back and, and get back playing Sevens. We've, we were up at Edinburgh Sevens three weeks ago, then Peebles and Hoyken now this. So, um, as I say, we're kind of getting a bit of a routine and, and it's just nice to be back playing rugby but uh, look there was loads going on here it was a really well run tournament we had the 16s and the 18s on the back pitches and um, there was some mixed ability rugby on you know there was there was food vendors uh, loads of entertainment for the kids so yeah as i say really really good event uh, live music i can just hear them in the background forgot about them but no credit to gal really well run event and um, as you said a uh, bit unfortunate with the weather and the rain but still a good turnout and um, so nah just just thanks for putting that on well that's it for this week next saturday we're focusing on semi junior rugby with the start of the league season. We'll be covering Hoyt Youth against Jed Thistle. Hope you can join us then, but for now, cheerio!